Raising kids can be one of the greatest rewards of a parent's life, but let's be real. Some days, parenting can be relentless. I Love My Kid But is a new parenting podcast from Wondery that shares a refreshingly honest and insightful take on parenting. Hosted by comedians Megan Gailey, Chris Garcia, and Kurt Brownelier, they will be your resident, not-so-expert experts. Each week, they'll share a parenting story that'll have you laughing, nodding, and thinking, yes, I have absolutely been there. They'll talk about what went right and wrong and what they would do differently. And the next time you step on yet another stray Lego in the middle of the night, you'll feel less alone. So if you like to laugh while listening to comedians vent about the hardest job in the world, listen to I Love My Kid, but wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen ad-free on the Amazon Music or Wondery app. Hey there, mom and dad are fighting listeners. Before we get started, I want to let you know about a story coming up a little later in the show. It's from our partners at Macy's. For over a decade, Macy's has partnered with The Trevor Project, the leading suicide prevention organization for LGBTQ young people. From June 1st to 30th, you can support The Trevor Project by rounding up your Macy's in-store purchase or donating online. Stick around to hear from Sophie from The Trevor Project. This episode contains explicit language. Welcome to Mom and Dad are Fighting, Slate's parenting podcast for Thursday, June 8th, the Book Club Blues Edition. I'm Zach Rosen. I make the Best Advice Show podcast, and I'm dad to Noah, who's five, and Ami, who's two. We live in Detroit. I'm Elizabeth Newcamp. I write the homeschool and family travel blog, Dutch Dutch Goose. I'm the mom of three littles, Henry, who's 11, Oliver, who's nine, and Teddy, who's six. We live in Colorado Springs, Colorado. I'm Jamila Lemieux. I'm a writer, contributor to Slate's Care and Feeding Parenting column, and mom to Naima, who's 10, and we live in Los Angeles. Today on the show, it's our letter writer's turn to host her book club, but she's worried her house doesn't have the space and that it'll highlight the income differences between her and her fellow book club members. She loves this group, but as the time grows closer, her anxiety is on the rise. We're also going to touch base on our week in parenting, and if you're sticking around for Slate Plus, we are talking about Slate's What Next TBD episode on posting your kids' lives on social media and what happens when those kids want to claim their privacy. Here's what you hear if you have Slate Plus. I'm constantly seeing TikToks of parents that are humiliating or embarrassing their kids or talking about punishments. Your child gets in trouble. That's not a time to create content. It gets dicey because, again, we share some of those stories on here. We share stories about our kids not always behaving their best. Um, But this is a little different because you can't see them. You know, it's slightly harder to tie it to them in the way that the woman at the beginning can't hide from it. Like people know who she is by how she looks and how she sounds and seems very traumatic. As a Slate Plus member, you'll get a whole bonus segment every week. Plus, you get to listen to all your favorite Slate podcasts ad-free. It's truly the best way to listen and the best way to support this show. You can sign up for Slate Plus now at slate.com slash plus. Okay, we're going to jump into triumphs and fails as soon as we get back from this quick break. This podcast is brought to you by Slate Studios and Macy's. Hey, y'all, what's up? It's your girl, Lene Vanee. I'm a writer, creator, and a change maker. And the first step in making meaningful change is talking about the really hard things. Did you know that LGBTQ young people are four times more likely to attempt suicide than their peers? Macy's and The Trevor Project are on a mission to change that. The Trevor Project is the leading organization doing crisis intervention and mental health work for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and questioning young people. My name is Sophie Good. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a senior corporate partnerships manager at The Trevor Project. The Trevor Project is a suicide prevention organization. The work that we do is very serious and it's very urgent. As much as we see a bright future and see the opportunities to make change, we know that LGBTQ young people are in pain and in danger right now. And support from Macy's empowers us. We've expanded our crisis services from just having the phone line to also having 24-7 service on text and chat. We've increased our lineup of suicide prevention programming as well. Working towards the world we want to create and making sure that we're showing up for young people in this moment is so important. Now's the time to help LGBTQ young people in crisis. 
This June, Pride Month, when you round up your purchase at Macy's or donate online, you'll help fund the Trevor Project's comprehensive approach to suicide prevention among LGBTQ young people. Find out how Macy's is creating brighter futures for all at Macy's.com slash purpose. Raising kids can be one of the greatest rewards of a parent's life, but let's be real. Some days, parenting can be relentless. I love my kid, but is a new parenting podcast from Wondery that shares a refreshingly honest and insightful take on parenting. Hosted by comedians Megan Gailey, Chris Garcia, and Kurt Brownalier, they will be your resident, not-so-expert experts. Each week, they'll share a parenting story that'll have you laughing, nodding, and thinking, yes, I have absolutely been there. They'll talk about what went right and wrong and what they would do differently. And the next time you step on yet another stray Lego in the middle of the night, you'll feel less alone. So if you like to laugh while listening to comedians vent about the hardest job in the world, listen to I Love My Kid, but wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen ad-free on the Amazon Music or Wondery app. So Jamila, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Um, I have less of a triumph or fail and more of just the thing that happened. Um, But we got through it. Yesterday, I picked Naeem up from after school and she had a rough day there. She got in trouble with the teacher and she feels like it wasn't her fault. She and one of her friends called me all upset. They hate after school. The teachers are so mean. It's awful. And so when I go to pick her up, I knew she was really ready to go. And when we're leaving, the teachers wanted to talk to me about what happened. And Naeem was like, my stomach hurts. I really need to go. And I'm like, you got to wait. You know, I got to talk to them. And so she's all frustrated. And when we're leaving, she's like doubled over. She's like, my stomach hurts so bad. And I tried to go to the bathroom and, you know, and she's just like, mommy, like she can barely walk, you know. And Naima gets frequent stomach aches. Um, oftentimes they are seemingly related to something that's gone wrong. You know, if she's upset or anxious about something, you know, so it's kind of hard. I don't really know how to treat them, you know, Mm -hmm. and, but this time she's just really in pain, you know, like just not doing well. And so I'm like, okay, we can find an urgent care place, you know, like, do we need to go to the doctor? She's like, I don't know, but mommy, it just hurts so bad. And so I'm like, I'm always worried about appendicitis, you know, like, I don't Mm -hmm. want this to be the time something is really wrong and we don't do anything about it. So I drive to one urgent care place. They're closed due to a staff shortage, which is devastating. Um, So then I find another one, a pediatric urgent care, actually. It's not too far from us. So I get there, you know, we park. And Naima's like, wait, can I just try to use the bathroom? You know, I'm like, can we, she was like, can we just go somewhere with the bathroom first? I'm like, okay. So I drive a couple blocks over to a Jack in the Box. Buy a soda because the bathroom is for customers only. And Naima proceeds to take the biggest poop. (laughs) Epic poop. Huge. EP. And then she feels better. (laughs) So I'm thinking her little appendix is going to burst or something. She's in dire medical straits. She's just backed up. She's just backed up. But the soda was probably cheaper than the copay. Oh my God, yes. It was. (laughs) It definitely was. Yeah, urgent care can be expensive. When? So I think that is a triumph. (laughs) That's absolutely what triumph. That we didn't go to urgent care. When it happened. I don't know if she told you you were there. You know, you were there. But did you laugh? (laughs) Or were you mad? You know, it was it was quite the experience. Um, She had me hold her hand because it was painful. (laughs) And it was so much. And she told me she was like. I need you to distract me. So tell me a story. Tell me about some of the dates you've been on. Tell me some stories. (laughs) So this leads to like an hour of us talking about my bad date stories. In the bathroom of the Jack and Box. In the bathroom of the Jack and Box. But I got her through. I'm so sorry. It is funny, but it's also not funny. Yeah. But she must have felt so relieved after. She did. Well, I'm glad she's fine. Yeah. Yes. Well... Great. I'm feeling relieved just hearing that story. Elizabeth, what about you? I'm taking a failure, but it is also just like where we are in our life. So there's like a lot of sort of inevitable heartbreak with moving. And I am having a really hard time because 
I of course want to prevent it because watching my kids having the heartbreak is so hard, but also like, I know that part of it is character building and this specific Mm. thing that's happening is that uh, our local zoo, Cheyenne Mountain Zoo, which is lovely, has a program for six, starting at sixth grade where you can go work there and be part of the zoo crew. And this is something that Henry, who is like very into animals and all of this, has been looking forward to basically since we got back here and he heard about it. He had asked us about it when we first moved back and like went to the zoo, was like, I want to work here. Um, His best friend's mother is like works at the zoo, all of this stuff. So he's been very exposed to all of the things they get to do. And he's really excited about it. The time came this year to apply. And of course, by that point, we knew that we were moving to Tokyo and we called and there's just no way to really make it work with the short amount of time that we are here during the summer, right? I mean, one, um, there's like the parents pay to do this. So there's a financial commitment, but also you're committing to like going and working at the zoo for for however many weeks, and we just really couldn't make it work. And he, I think at that point, was fine with it. Well, what I was able to offer him was sort of like, hey, sixth grade is also the last year that you can go to zoo camp. Do you want to go do that? And he's like, yes. Uh So he's at zoo camp this week. And of course, two of his very good friends are in the zoo crew, and he is seeing them every day. The zoo crew works with stuff that the zoo does. So he's now in this position of like, two of his good friends are working at the you know, goat station and getting to tell people about animals. And he's like part of the summer camp. So when I picked Uh him up yesterday, despite him having a wonderful day and later in the day, him telling me all the wonderful things he did and how excited he is, he's making new friends at zoo camp. His immediate reaction being 11 and a preteen is like, and just so much anger at me and at the move. And now he has to like Mm. go to the zoo and see his friends doing this. Like, I just feel for him because I get it and I wish that he could have all these things. But I also, as a parent, feel like it's not good to always get what you want. That's right. It's good to have challenges. And like, Mm -hmm. we have a lot of benefits from military life. And this is one of the downsides. Like, we are just never these things we learn about that you have to grow into. We are just never there for it. But sometimes we arrive at places And things work out and we get to do things we didn't even know about, right? But he doesn't want to hear any of that and it's not really the time. So I feel like I'm just stuck in this very, um, it's just like a hard time and Jeff's gone because he's in Japan for the next 10 days figuring some things out. And so it's just a hard place to be because I am the parent that is sort of absorbing these emotional blows and of course, you know, trying to be like, I hear you and that's so frustrating and I want to try to justify it, but I also know that like we just have to sit with these feelings um, and it's pretty awful. So just kind of feeling blah. Like I said, later in the day, he was like, he was telling me all the wonder- fun things they got to do at zoo camp. And there's two other military kids who are also moving in his group. And he like met them and they were sharing about that. So I, I think he is able to recognize that, but he is not quite frontally lobed developed enough to be able to say like I understand this frustration so instead it's just like we're on this roller coaster of angry about the move slash happy about the things we're doing what does he say what's his language around being angry I mean you know it's the in the car this morning I said does anyone have any ideas for triumphs or fails and you know he screams uh, failure of like of you and dad for moving. <laughs> you know, how was camp? Terrible. I had to watch my friends do all the things I've ever hoped to be able to do Aww. while I'm a camper. I wanted to clean up all the goat shit. Yeah. I mean, I he is like, I have to walk around with a counselor and they walk around the zoo totally free. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, Aww. okay. Yeah. Did you watch Succession? No. So is this? Well, everyone's Succession is just in the air right now, but you are Tom Wamsgans, this <laughs> character. And I won't say much because he, he describes himself as a pain sponge. Oh, and that's yeah. what that's what you are right now. You're just the pain sponge. You're just absorbing I am. all of the stuff that uh that uh your kids are throwing at you. I mean that's I think that's part of that that is what parenting is I was in a lot of ways. Say, it's being, is being this the pain sponge. That's what we do for a living. Yeah. Yeah, like the the emotional regulation around here but i just think with an 11 year old it's like the things that you can do to comfort your younger kids like he just kind of has to be angry and all i can kind of do is put up a boundary to like you know language and stuff that is inappropriate and hurts the relationship versus like i completely understand you're frustrated 
And yeah, da- you know, I think if Jeff were home, he might be a little bit angrier at <laughs> Jeff. Um, but Jeff's not home, so he's angry at me. I'm sorry. I know this is this is a, a massive transition. But soon enough, you're going to be in Japan in a beautiful apartment that Jeff is signing a lease on today. We can only hope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're going to have such good chicken, I've heard. That's the thing. I want to be like... There's all this good stuff, right? Because that is, one, my personality, and two, like, develop frontal lobe. I'm like, okay, this is tough, but, like, we're moving towards something that's going to have all these highs, too. But 11-year-olds are just, they don't care. He wants the good feelings now. Right. Anyway, Zach, how was your week? Have I talked about gymnastics yet and Noah? I don't think so. I don't think think I have. Okay. So Noah for some time has been asking to go to gymnastics class. She's really interested in, you know, somersaults and monkey bars, and she's just kind of predisposed to that type of body movement. And so finally we signed her up for a weekly gymnastics class and she freaking loves it. She, she is like taking to it so quickly and so uh, steadfastly and is doing cartwheels all over the house. And she's just really into it. But already my mind is going to like, I do not want her to be a gymnastics kid. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be going to gymnastics meets and spending all of our time and money on this thing. Um, Cause like the, the, you know, the, the older the kids get, like the more intense it gets. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And like, you know, we see, we see kids in there, mostly young girls who are like going like four days a week. And I don't want to dampen her excitement at all at the same time frankly i don't want to encourage her to like get so deep in and so i know right now like we do have the control and like right now we signed her up for like a four class package she's going to the fourth one this week we're going to take the summer off um but she's very she's already asking like you know when am i going to go back i want to go back i want to go back so like i'm fine with it being like a weekly thing but i'm just wondering is there any kind of delicate dance that you two have figured out or have heard of where it's like, yeah, like totally, this is great as just like a fun recreational thing, but we're not going to take it to the next level. Well, I think you can absolutely put down that, put that, down that barrier. I mean, we did that very early on when we were in Florida, Henry got into a gymnastics class and, you know, they approached and said like, Oh, well, we'd like him to think about doing team. I mean, he was, I don't know how old he was right. four years ago or whatever, young, too young. And Jeff yeah. and I were just like, nope, <laughs> you know, right. we did, and he was like, hey, you know, because the coaches encourage them too, and we is just it said, marketing? Is it the, are the coaches doing it because it's like they're trying to get money out of us? I mean, I hate to say yes, but I mean, I think they, like, that's how you grow. Like, if you see a kid that is enjoying it and has some potential, right? Like, you encourage them. That, right. Right. Uh, I think some parents want that. Jamila, do you think they're doing it to get money? <laughs> Uh, I think it's both. I think sometimes they see something in a kid and say, you should really stick with this. And other times it's yeah. like, we got to keep our numbers up. So we want to <laughs> make sure we've got kids here. But I think you'll know, you know, I've, cause we travel, I've always been very hesitant about like, we can't really be getting into something that is going to control so much of our time. And we've turned down lots of opportunities, but I think then it's also given opportunities for the kids to try you know, other things. Um, yep. But also yep. I think you'll like know when the time is right. I don't know. Like Oliver wants to go twice a week to fencing. Uh, and to us, it just feels like, yeah, this is like a good fit for him. Like he's not into mm-hmm. a lot else. Mm-hmm. Fencing gives us a lot of control over, you know, it's not, you don't go to workouts four days a week. You don't um, like two hours a week seems really manageable because he doesn't really want to do anything else. But he's also nine, you know, (laughs) like we've tried a bunch of stuff, um, but I think it's okay to exert your parental authority and say, you really like this and it's really fun. And that's what this is supposed to be. Go once a week, have a bunch of fun. But like, this doesn't have to be, I mean, what is it even like? There aren't, there's you can't be like a career gymnast. There's like what, four of those. Right. Uh, It's like you're shooting for the Olympics or nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't want to say, no, we're shooting for nothing, but uh, (laughs) we're shooting for nothing. We're just shooting shooting to have fun. fun. Like the goal of this is like fun, physical activity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay. Well, that makes me feel a little bit better. Thank you. 
I mean, good luck, because when they pressure you, it's going to feel different. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's. I'll, I'll keep you posted when that happens. Um, and on that note, we're going to take another quick break. See you back here for our listener question. Raising kids can be one of the greatest rewards of a parent's life. But let's be real. Some days, parenting can be relentless. I love my kid, but is a new parenting podcast from Wondery that shares a refreshingly honest and insightful take on parenting. Hosted by comedians Megan Gailey, Chris Garcia, and Kurt Brownelier, they will be your resident, not-so-expert experts. Each week, they'll share a parenting story that'll have you laughing, nodding, and thinking, yes, I have absolutely been there. They'll talk about what went right and wrong and what they would do differently. And the next time you step on yet another stray Lego in the middle of the night, you'll feel less alone. So if you like to laugh while listening to comedians vent about the hardest job in the world, listen to I Love My Kid, but wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen ad-free on the Amazon Music or Wondery app. Hey, everybody. It's Tim Heidecker. You know me, Tim and Eric, Bridesmaids and uh, Fantastic Four. I'd like to personally invite you to listen to Office Hours Live with me and my co-hosts, DJ Doug Pound. Hello. And Vic Berger. Howdy. Every week we bring you laughs, fun, games, and lots of other surprises. It's live. We take your Zoom calls. Music. We love having fun. Excuse me? Songs. Vic said something. Music. Songs. Music. I like having fun. I like to laugh. I like to meet people who can make me laugh. Please subscribe. No. We're back and ready to hear today's listener question. Dear Mom and Dad, how do you handle income disparities with mom friends? Long story short, I'm in a book club for local moms, and it's been amazing. We're all new to each other, but meeting monthly since November has been really, really good for me. But I have this lingering awkwardness in the back of my mind about hosting a book club meeting at my house, because my family lives in a smaller house than the others I've met. We live outside a major metropolitan city in the U.S. in a fairly medium-slash-high-middle-income class area. I've never really had keeping up with the Joneses types of feelings, so it's not like I'm desperate for a bigger house. But, you know, when the houses of everyone you meet are about 1,000 square feet bigger than yours, it just feels a little weird when inviting them back to yours. This is mainly coming up because we trade hosting book club, and it's getting close to the time that everyone else has hosted, except for me. And if I'm honest... I don't know if I can do so super comfortably because our house doesn't have a basement or separate area where the moms can go and be undisturbed by my kiddo or husband. So, any advice? I'm not ashamed of my house, per se, mind you. It just feels weird and awkward and kind of bringing up some insecurities from growing up in an immigrant household, but that's a whole other story. Thanks for any insight. The poor mom in my mom group. I can relate on some level. I just know a number of people that just have a lot more money than I do. You know, people who own big houses and drive luxury cars. And you can definitely feel a way about yourself when you compare them, you know, and bringing people into your space can be hard. But honestly, these moms know you, they like you, they're your friends. You know, I think they're probably already aware of the fact that there's an income difference. You know, it hasn't affected them wanting you to be in this group. So you don't have a separate area where your husband and your kid can go, you know, to be away from your husband and your kid, put them out. This is your one thing, you know, like you're not hosting people in the house on a regular basis, putting them out, let them go to the park, go to the mall, go to the movies, have good food. That is, Yes. Will solve for so much of this. And you don't have yep. to spend a ton of money on it, but just have good snacks. If you have good snacks, people will be happy. They won't be sitting around comparing the sizes of your living rooms, you know? And if that's the type of people they are, you don't really want to hang out with them anyway. You know, yes. if, they would, if, if they're snobby and elitist, then you need to find some more moms to hang out with. But I'm telling you, Having good food will make all the difference. That is what they will remember. That is what they will think about. We had good snacks. That's exactly what I was going to say. I completely agree. I think like the feeling of your home, like when I think about my friends and their homes, I think about the feeling I get when we're there. And so many, much of that feeling is not related to size or income, but about like, I've just been in some of the coziest, most welcoming Mm -hmm. homes 
that are not particularly large or have a bunch of stuff, but just the feeling you get when you are there, or they are such a great host or hostess that you just feel so welcome that none of that matters. And I can't stress enough what Jamila said. If they care about your house, these people are not your friends and find something else. And it sounds like how you're in a book. It's a book club. Like they clearly like having you there and what you're discussing. If you just feel like the house is a like a a non-starter, I think that there are lots of ways to be the host without being there. And very like maybe you host it in the evenings and you can't put your kids out. Go to a coffee shop, go to a library, go to a you can make another space cozy or invite everyone to um, a space that you know or finding something. I think you can also co host with someone. I um, have been in groups, particularly when my kids were younger and like my house was just kind of crate, like having people over really disturbed bedtime and just kind of saying, like, hey, we're just not in the space where I can like have all these people here because then I can't get the kids down. Can I like co host? Can I do the food and stuff, but we can have it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. your space i think mm-hmm. you know especially if there's like one or two people that seem to either really host or you've developed a connection with again i just i, I think it's okay to say i just can't have this at my house for what you don't even have to tell them a reason like he, i'd love to host but you know my house is just not an option right now um is totally fine too but i i just don't think in i think i uh, one of the things i was thinking about is like is this concern coming internally versus is there anything in the group that is causing you to feel like are people saying thing at, uh, saying things at other people's homes that make you feel uncomfortable? Um, and if it's internal, you might just need to, you know, confront it, come up with a different plan and move forward. And once you get through hosting, be that at your house or somewhere else, feeling good that you sort of came head to head with this insecurity that you had and everything was fine and they're still all your friends and they're so excited to still have you in this book club. Yeah, that idea of compare and despair, like it can only it only leads to to disappointment. And maybe even hosting in your backyard. I don't know what kind of yard oh. you have, but just like it's spring now. That would be nice. Yeah. Um fire pit and like folding chairs. You don't you don't need much. S'mores. Uh back to the snacks. S- snacks, I agree, are just of the utmost importance here. And also just like cleaning the house. Like it doesn't matter how big your house is, if it's clean that that makes a much bigger difference i know you said that's a whole other story like the insecurities about your immigrant household but it does sound like this this is coming from that and also i feel like i agree with elizabeth that yeah you could co-host with someone else but i feel like there's something to actually doing it at your house and kind of breaking the seal and realizing oh this was actually totally great or if like one woman makes a catty comment like then you could be like all right i don't want to be friends with her anymore so it, it's it could just be a good you know this is kind of like one of those things where just like diving into your own discomfort might lead you somewhere liberatory on the other side um but i totally get it especially if like these other houses are super nice you, we can't help but compare our our living spaces to others i mean i i certainly do it so um i totally get it but i think you're gonna host a great party and we're very curious for two very specific follow-ups, how it goes and what snacks you provided. So please, <laughs> Send please us let your us menu. know. Please let us know. Yeah. Have wine. Like, yep. Or make like a cool cocktail. Yes. Like a sangria. Sangria. I mean, oh my God. Sangria is easy. It's like delicious. You can play around with a lot of different juices and flavors, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, If you want, they've got these cool pouches on Amazon. I bought them. I actually served these to adults at Naima's birthday party one year, which was crazy. But, like, they're, like, large Capri Sun type pouch. (laughs) They're plastic. Love that. And you can make frozen drinks and put them in the freezer. You know, they don't take up a ton of space. Um, You can do that. Also, like, these are moms in a book club. They're happy to be out of their own homes. <laughs> yes. yes. They don't, yes. don't want to be in there. <laughs> They're in happy. In their big old houses. They're it's happy. It's not their chaos. <laughs> no. Yeah. Somebody else has to do it. That's part of the fun. You know, they're away from their kids for a couple of hours. They've got snacks and wine or sangria. They're fine. Well, poor mom. We really appreciate your question. Please do keep us posted. And if any of our listeners have faced similar challenges, we'd love to hear from you. You can also send us your questions. Drop us a line at slate.com or leave us a voicemail at 646-357-9318. 
That's our show. Please subscribe, leave a rating and review, and tell your friends. That helps us grow our little community here. Thank you so much for doing that. This episode of Mom and Dad Are Fighting is produced by Rosemary Belson and Maura Curry. Shasha Leonard is the voice of our listeners. Alicia Montgomery is VP of Slate Audio. For Jamila Lemieux and Elizabeth Newcamp, I am Zach Rosen. Thanks for listening. 